You're going to see problems that are going to have an x within the inequality, and then you'll have some form of x outside the inequality like you have in this equation. Um, so we still need to end up getting these two together and solve for the 1x. It's not that big a deal, but it can be confusing when you're dealing with inequalities. So what we want to do, first and foremost, we want to try to isolate this. We have to get this by itself so we can get rid of the absolute value bars and make our two separate equations like normal. So let's just work towards that first. Don't get ahead of yourself and think of what do I do with that other x. It's not a big deal. It's just something you got to think about a little bit. So I'm getting rid of this 8. I added 8 on the left side and on the right side. They don't combine, so I'm just going to write 2x plus 8 because these are not like terms. I have an x variable and then an 8. You can't put those together. They're not like terms. But now, our left side, we have just our absolute value of 3x plus 2. Just like anything else, we have to split this up now. And it's good that on the right side I have a binomial because you need to understand how to do that. So first things first, let's just do the positive version of this. We'll say 3x plus 2 is equal to 2x plus 8. Now the other problem that we would normally set up is 3x plus 2 is equal to, and then we would change the sign for the binomial. And it's the same thing. We're doing it exactly the same way. That's basically what you're doing here. You're going to have a negative, and then you have 2x plus 8. And I write it that way. That way you understand this negative gets distributed. That could have been a minus 8 right there instead of a positive, and then that would have changed it to positive. The only thing you need to know, really, you change the sign of each one of those. We are It was positive over here, so we need to change the sign of not only the 2x, but also of the 8. So we need to go ahead and we'll make that 3x plus 2 is equal to negative 2x minus 8. And remember, like I said, it's not simply just putting negatives in front of those. You're changing the sign. It just so happens these are both already positive. Whenever we did this version of it, we brought everything down exactly the same as what it was. It just so happened they were both positive. So you bring it down exactly how it looks, just drop those bars one time, and then for the other problem, you change the sign of everything on the right side. So now we can do our math. It's not that bad. I'm going to subtract 2x from the right side. That way I get my x's on the same side. I have x plus 2 now is equal to 8. Now I can subtract 2 on each side. x will equal 6. And, that's, um, and then on this other problem that we did over here, now to get rid of that 2x, instead of subtracting it, I want to add 2x to each side. And I'm going to make it 5x plus 2 is equal to negative 8. Now I can subtract 2 from each side, and I'll have 5x, that canceled, is equal to negative 10. Divide by 5 on each side, and x will equal negative 2. So my answers are going to be just the 6 and the negative 2. Since we are doing this on Delta Math, you also need to know how to type it in exactly the way they're asking for it. So they want your answers to be written, and, and this is the proper way. You want to write it out as x is equal to, and you want to do a squiggly bracket, also known as a brace, 6 and negative 2. And that's all there is to it. So instead of just writing x equals negative 6 and x equals negative 2, after you get those, you want to write the answer out like this. x equals, and you'll do a brace, 6, comma, negative 2, and then the other brace. 
Now, I skipped a little piece of this, um, and I really shouldn't have. I need to go back and, and go ahead and do this. Um, this is our answer. This is correct. But we need to know that anytime we're dealing with this, where I've got the X over here as well, I need to be able to plug these values in and make sure I'm not left with something that says an inequality is equal to a negative number. Um, for this one, I'm not going to plug back into the original because I've already got it worked around to where I want it right there. But what you want to do, you want to get to the point in your equation where you have the absolute value by itself on one side. So the 3x plus 2 is by itself on the left side. And then you want to plug these numbers in to make sure they make sense. Now, the positive number is always going to make sense here unless there was a negative right here. If this would have been a negative sign, then the positive number wouldn't make sense. So you still need to plug them in anyway, just to be mindful of that. It's just good practice. And what's it matter if you're going to get a little bit of extra math practice? We could all use it. So I'm going to just change all this by plugging in the 6 for the x. And so 3 times 6 is 18. So I have the absolute value of 18 plus 2. And it's also a good way just to check the math in general. 2 times 6 is 12. So then I end up, and that was a 2. That's an ugly 2 still. But I have absolute value of 20 is equal to 20. And that's a true statement. So that works. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. We've done that now. Let's take it out. Well, I didn't mean to erase all that, but I'll just write it out again. Absolute value of 3x plus 2 is equal to 2x plus 8. Now I'm going to plug in a negative 2. 3 times negative 2 plus 2 is equal to 2 times negative 2 plus 8. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 plus 2. And that's going to be equal to negative 4 plus 8. Negative 6 plus 2, I'll have absolute value of negative 4. And that should equal negative 4 plus 8 is positive 4. Absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4, so that works. Um, again, all this is necessary because there's going to be times, like you'll see in the next problem, that you plug a number in and it's going to end up saying something like, Absolute value of negative 4 would be negative 4. And in that case, you can't have that. So let's take that out. Now for this problem, we were already simplified down to on our left side to where we have absolute value of x plus 4. So we don't have to do that extra step like we did on the other problem. Uh, and we have that equal to a 3x. So we still have an x over here that we're gonna to have to combine eventually with the x that we have in our absolute value. So I can go ahead and set up two separate problems. I'm gonna say x plus four is equal to positive three x. And then also I'll have x plus four is equal to negative three x. After I do this, I can do this a couple different ways. I already got my four on the left side, so I'm gonna just subtract x from each side. And I'll have 4 is equal to 2x. You divide by 2. And then I have x is equal to 2. And then I can do the same thing on the other problem. Um, I'm going to subtract x on each side. I have 4 is equal to negative 4x. Now I can divide by negative 4. And we'll have negative 1 is our x value. Now there's only one step that we still have to do. Now I have to check to make sure that these values work. I can't just assume they're gonna work and you're gonna see why. So first off, when I'm looking at this, I'm at the point where I've done it so many times I can eyeball it, I can tell you that two's gonna work and negative one's not. But let me show you mathematically why not. If we plug the two back in, I'm gonna have, instead of that X, I'm gonna make two plus four Absolute value of 2 plus 4 is equal to 3 times 2. And we'll say, all right, well, absolute value of 6 
is equal to 6, and that's a correct statement. Here's our problem. I could say absolute value of negative 1 plus 4 equal to 3 times negative 1, and then this is where I run into an issue. I can combine that on the left side. It doesn't really matter at this point. We'll say absolute value of 3, and it says it's equal to negative 3 doesn't matter what this is over here. You never can have an absolute value that is going to have a negative 3 or any negative number that it will equal to. Whatever you take the absolute value of has to be equal to something positive. It cannot be equal to a negative number. So we're going to reject that negative 1. So negative 1 is no good. X is only equal to 2.